Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about how businesses work. Um, so far we've talked a little bit about the identity of the business, um, customers, uh, and um, products that businesses create. Um, businesses really need to make their own identity. They really need to identify what their product is um, and who their customers are. Uh, but imagine we're trying to make a product. We're trying to make a, um, a global business today. What are some of the things we're going to need? Let's, let's take a look at some of the IT businesses that exist in Korea. Okay? Um, if it's an IT business, your user usually offering as a product, product, some type of service. Okay? So we're offering some type of service as a product. So think of KakaoTalk. Um, the service is a chat service. They have a lot of other services as well, um, and um, all of them make different amounts of money. But what um, service do they offer through the chat service? Well, through chat, um, we have access to a lot of other things. First, we can communicate with our friends. Okay, Does it cost any money to use the chat service? No. The chat service is free. Free. Um, so how does the chat service actually make money? Well, um, the chat service itself, if you're on Windows or if you're using the um, uh, computer-based one, they do advertising on uh, the desktop, um, a little bit on uh, the, the smartphone version, but mostly on the desktop. So they do run ads, so the chat makes money through advertising. Um, which to me is crazy. No other company that I know of does that for chats, but anyway. Um, and what else do they make? Well, they make money off of funneling users into other um, services. Okay, so other services, for example, Cacao Games, things like that, that's a different service, but it's so tightly integrated with Cacao Talk that people don't even realize that it's kind of a different service. Um, so funneling people into other services that are paid, right? And then also um, extra features in Cacao Talk like stickers. This is actually a different service as well, but it's also part of the chat client. So purchasing stickers or paying for extra services like that. So really the chat client, just chatting, doesn't make any money okay, by itself. Um, we'll talk about one, one instance where it could make some money in a second. But basically, they make their money through advertising on the desktop. Other services are channeling users into other services through the chat application. Um, and then those are paid services. And then extra things like stickers, um, where people actually pay a little bit of money, and then they can um, use those features in the chat. Okay, well, how else could Cacao Talk make money? Well, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, um, by selling data. Cacao Talk has a lot of data on everyone who uses Cacao Talk, right? They have, for example, things like locations. Locations, they have, um, they can search all of your text messages, for example, for keywords. Um, they can search for, um, for example, who talks to whom? Who talks to whom? Uh, you know, what, what your interests are, what kind of things you're talking about, who you're talking to, where you're talking, where you're going, what you, type of pictures you're taking. Are you talking about food? Are you talking about movies? What movies are you talking about? They could collect all of that information. Okay. Um, and with all of that information, uh, they can sell it to whoever wants to buy it. So if the information is anonymized, or supposed to be anonymized, then they can sell that information to other companies. Right? Other companies really want to know um, if you're a you know 15 to 20 year old, what movies are you talking about right now? If you're a a uh, 39-year-old um, living in Chuncheon, um, what uh, favorite place to eat? What, what's your favorite place to eat? Or what place do you talk about to eat a lot? That information is excellent for um, doing both advertising 
and making predictions about what people um, are going to do in the future and how can we sell to them better. So selling data to, for example, other companies or um, even potentially to the government. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of statistics are collected and sold to the government about what people talk about and, and all of these other things. So chat is a service that doesn't really make any money by itself but it produces a lot of things that are very useful for making money. For example, an avenue to channel people to other places that do make money or to generate data. And most companies today, the reason I'm talking about this is because most companies today make all of their money from data. Data collection, data processing, data analytics, right? So the best companies or the best IT companies in the world are just collecting huge amounts of data on as many people as they can and then finding ways to monetize that data or make money from that data. Um, data is extremely important, um, but more important than the data itself is being able to actually process and analyze the data in a timely manner. Um, some companies generate so much data that a lot of it is just wasted because they can't process it all or make sense out of what it's telling them. Um, so data analytics today um, and in the future will be the biggest um, jobs that you can possibly get. Everyone uh, will need to be able to do some type of data analytics for companies. Um, so if you started a data analytics company today, in the next five years, or even possibly right now, um, you would immediately be in use if you can actually do real data analysis and help companies to make better decisions based on the data that they have. So for example, even for coffee shops, um, in the last couple of years, I've tried to work with small coffee shops that maybe I just liked their, um, the owners or something like that. I drink a lot of coffee. So <laughs> what I wanted to do is help them to be able to make better decisions about their business. They have, like we talked about before, a cash register, right? So they have a cash register and that cash register has data on all of the transactions, transactions, all of the coffee, all of the cake, everything that they've sold in their, in their business, it has all of the transactions in the cash register. Well, with that data, you can start to predict things. So predict, predict how many coffees am I going to sell if it's, you know, 20 degrees outside. How many iced coffees am I going to sell if it's four degrees outside? If you have enough data, you can start to make predictions like that. On Tuesday, I know I'm going to probably get around 50 customers. On Thursday, I know I'm going to get 100. If you can start to make those predictions, then you can start to manipulate um, uh, some different variables. So for example, if I know that very few people come in on Tuesday, then I can run a sale Maybe I have coupons or something. So on Tuesdays, I, I do 10% off coffee. Okay. Well, if I run a sale on Tuesday, since nobody comes in, then maybe more people start coming in and I start making more of a profit on Tuesday. Because people have come in on Tuesday when it's a sale day, they start to get familiar with my um, coffee shop and then they start coming in more just because they already know that it's a good place to, to buy coffee, for example. So... With just cash register information, we can analyze the transactions and make a lot of predictions about how people buy things, what people buy things, um, what combinations of things do people like to buy. We can figure out the things on our menu that is working and not working. Um, we can do a lot of different um, analyses about how to make the business better just from cash register transactions. And every um, small business, especially that I've went into, um, that tries uh, that has this data, they never analyze it. They basically just look and, and make sure that their costs are less than their revenue, right? So they're, um, are they making more money than what they put in? That's basically all they look at. But they have so much more information or so much more data that they can use to make decisions to make more money out of their business. Um, and just run their business better. But very few people do it because no one or very few people right now understand the value of data.
The people that understand the value of data are these big IT companies that basically put the data in the center of all of their business. They don't really care so much about each of the services. They care about the data that those services create and the amount of value that that generates for them. If they have the data, they have the knowledge. If they have the knowledge, then we are a knowledge economy, so then they have the power, right? This is really powerful, and it can be really powerful for small businesses too, but very few people understand that. So if you wanted to make a business right now, um, doing basic data analytics for small businesses for a very low price would be an excellent business because all, like in, even in Chunshan, I can think of at least 100 businesses that would benefit from this kind of analytics in their small company. Um, so the point here is that companies, IT companies especially, but even some more traditional companies, are really becoming data focused. If you understand the data, if you understand how to analyze data, then you control the situation. A lot of businesses, however, don't have those skills and that's why they need you, okay? So that's it for today about data um, and, and how different uh, services use data um, and how businesses work, basically. So thank you very much.